Hello and welcome to video number 10 and just want to say congratulations you have reached the end of this video course. This is a bonus advanced strategy that I'm going to teach you that a lot of times you are not taught and most people don't even realize that this is happening. So kind of going back to what we talked about in single opt-in versus double opt-in. If you create a double opt-in list you still need to do a little bit of cleaning, but not as much is compared to that of a single opt-in list where you could be getting a bunch of fake emails. So in other words, cleaning your lists consistently and maintaining that every single month, because like I said, email ISPs like Gmail, AOL, Yahoo, they do care if you have people on your list that are actually active or not. If they're not, that can be an issue. So if you have a list of that thousand people and out of that list of thousand people, you have a hundred people on there that are fake, that will actually hurt your email deliverability. So even if you have 900 people on there that are not fake because the ESP or email service provider sees you as a spammer, they may not allow those 900 emails to even get to your legitimate subscribers, if that makes sense. So how do you go about doing that by using GetResponse? So what I'm going to do now is let's hop on over to GetResponse.com and I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to clean your list. Okay, so there are two different ways to do list hygiene. And one of the ways is by simply going to GetResponse.com, logging into your account, going under contacts, and then of course you will see list hygiene. If you go here, you'll see delete contacts or blacklist. If you click on blacklist, this will allow you to enter email addresses of people that you want to blacklist across your whole account. So to do that, what you can do is go to blacklist, click global blacklist for my account. And what that will do is it'll remove them totally from all of your lists. Meaning anytime somebody tries to sign up again, they won't be able to sign up. Now, obviously, they could get around that by entering a fake email if you had single opt-in turned on, or they could use a fake email address even if you're using Dell opt-in as well. So this only protects you to a certain degree, and this works actually really well in a lot of non-technical niches, especially. But if you are in a more technical niche like marketing or business or computers or programming, then this here, can help you to a degree, but only to a certain degree. And of course, blacklist for specific lists, which allows you to blacklist people for specific lists. But at the end of the day, we recommend doing the global blacklist compared to the specific lists. Now, another way of doing list hygiene and finding people that are maybe not active is by going to click search. Now, another way to do list hygiene is go to search and click on advanced search. And what we're trying to do here is find people that maybe who have never opened an email before or have never clicked a link before. Now, one thing to note here is that unless your emails are HTML emails or template based emails, you're not going to be able to track whether or not they open the email. So keep that in mind. Another thing is sometimes some devices won't actually load if, if, for example, Gmail, if you send an email to a Gmail account, a lot of times if you'll notice it says that the user has to click a link to allow Gmail to load an image. And if they don't click that and they open the email, then that's also hard to detect. So that just keep in mind that unless you have HTML email set up, that's one hard indication to go by. Now, one good indication to go by is if they actually click the link. So regardless of it's a plain text email or an HTML email, as long as they click the link, you can detect that. So what I would go by is people who do not click links. All right. What you can do here is you can do all selected lists, any autoresponder setting. So basically we're saying every single subscriber and we're going to add a condition. And let's say contact actions. So message open. And like I said, it's hard to detect that. So let's say last click date. 
So if last click date is before a certain date and we click apply and we, we notice that we have about a hundred people who have not clicked any links within the last, let's say six months, then you probably want to delete them because that means they're most likely inactive and you're paying for inactive people. I know psychologically you might be thinking, well, I, I want to keep that list. What if that list were to come back? You put them into a segment, you email that list and you say, Hey, I noticed that you haven't clicked any links. Um, I wonder why and how I can improve my content to fit your needs. Something like that may allow you to reactivate people who just aren't opening their emails and got to keep in mind, some people are just busy. So you can do that, but you can do the opposite. And let's say you send that out, nothing happens and you might get a few people clicking, but then of course you have the far and few people that just don't click. They sign up, they forget about it and they go to the move, move on to the next thing. So for those people, you can say contact actions, last click date is before, let's say six months out. So we click apply. And then now what we do is we see there's a certain amount of contacts down here that we'll be able to see how many people are not clicking the links. So now what we can do is we can save this. We can click this here this email address and we can save it as a segment and then we can email that segment. There are many different ways of doing this, but you really need to get creative and just think about, okay, what signifies somebody who is not active? And if they're not active, I shouldn't be paying for them on my list. And number two, believe it or not, they will actually harm your list. So if you have a list of a thousand people and only 10% are actually clicking through or, or worse, only 1% are clicking through then because it's a bigger list, you have a smaller amount of percentage. And as you're emailing out the email service provider will analyze how many people are actually clicking your links. Now let's say you have 900 people out of that list that are just inactive. So you delete all those 900 people and then you are left with a hundred people. But let's say those, 50 out of the hundred people were clicking anyways. Now you've narrowed it down from a very small percentage down to 50% open rate and 50% click through rate. So maybe a higher open rate, a larger 50% click through rate. And that is why you need to clean your list.